Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the line as he does every week on the show. And I'm going to be quite frank with you. I don't know if this show is going to work. I don't know if it's going to record. I don't know if the phone's going to cut out in the middle of it at this point. But that's the world we live in. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Mike Reyes. He's from CinemaBlend.com, and he reviews movies. He's not an AI bot that does it. He is a real, actual sort of human being. And professional. Don't forget professional. And, and professional. He's a sort of human professional. Anyways, Mike Gray is from Cinema Blend. How are you? I'm okay. That that just kind of that just reminds me of uh, what we do in the shadows. We're like, I'm Jackie Daytona, human bot. And, uh... <laughs> What's the... Do you there watch was... what we do in the shadows? I, you know what? I have, and it's one of those shows that I enjoy. I just don't watch it very often. I don't know what it is. Like, if I stumble across it, I will watch it, and I have a great time. But if I don't see it the next week, I, it doesn't bum me out if I miss it, if that makes any sense. Oh, man. It's not a show that has a narrative that's always like, oh, you got to keep coming back. you got to yeah. keep coming. Like, they're, they're looser than that. But the thing that keeps m- me watching and the thing that keeps my wife, well, my wife and I watch it together, but the thing that keeps us watching is just the fact that the humor is so on point, like, between vampire lore and also just the, the different quirks that everyone has in the house. Uh, This past week, there was a wonderful episode where there's like a water main break and the whole thing is the vampires in the house are like freaking out because Nandor was talking with a reporter and he thinks that he's outed them as vampires. (laughs) So they think that they're going to be hunted and they're preparing for war when like it's not that big a deal. But then things keep escalating and like one by one, each of our lovable idiots goes out to talk to the press. And thinks they've made the situation worse. Oh, boy. And it just keeps rising. And it's, oh, man. That's the Uh, best. And I will tell you, uh, season three, I think it was, whatever season it was that had the Jackie Daytona episode, has one of the best three-episode runs ever. Like, there was a point where for three weeks straight, that season was just delivering its best. And I don't know if you know who makes a cameo in that episode, but... There is someone really cool that cameos as a vampire in the Jackie Daytona episode, and you will absolutely lose it. Can you tell me, or are you going to keep it secret? If you want me to tell you, I will. Yeah, tell me. It's Mark Hamill. No way, really? Mark Hamill is a vampire hunting down Laszlo, Matt Berry's character. (laughs) And that's why he goes into hiding as Jackie Daytona human bartender. And the way that whole story is told, like, they have, like, they have like one of those, you know, intense conversations between the hunter and the hunted. Yeah. Where you don't know if they've been found out or not. And it's in a bar. And it's just with such awkward, it's that same sort of awkward, like the fact that he's calling himself Jackie Daytona, human bartender. And the way he talks about like human a- a- alcoholic beverages, like <laughs> that sort of awkwardness is in that whole conversation. And it's, Mark Hamill and Matt Berry just going toe to toe. Oh, that's awesome! I hope they bring his character back because I, I really think Mark, I think it's a good way for us to start this week. Mark Hamill is someone that I think he was one of the people that Star Wars overshadowed him while he did cool work in sci-fi movies. I don't think he got enough of a chance to really branch out into other things. No, and that's something that we've sort of seen him get to do now. I and. I, yeah. As bad as it sounds, I don't know if anyone ever took Mark Hamill as serious or saw him. Any, I shouldn't say as serious, but anything other than Luke Skywalker for a very long time, right? Yeah. And just, you know, he, he did do like, he's done like a fair share of like, you know, I don't say in a bad way, but B science fiction movies and like <clears throat> he was in those Wing Commander games and such. And it's like, it was cool that the man still got work. But I don't, like you said, I don't think people really valued him as a performer and really just gave him. Yeah, the same sort of same sort of opportunities like Harrison Ford. Got. Like Carrie Fisher, even to a certain extent, was robbed of that sort of thing in her career. Mark Hamill, great yeah. vampire hunter, just amazing. Just great person. I love watching, <laughs> reading that man. Uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com on the line with me right now. Uh, with vampires in mind, one of the things we are covering this week, there is a new vampire movie coming out. We're recording this portion of the show on Wednesday morning. Mike has not seen the movie, uh, but what is the movie called? Last Voyage of the Demeter. Okay. The Demeter. Dem- 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 Dementor. It's a Harry Potter Dem- thing Dem- now. Dem- 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 Real quick, let's go into it just a little bit what we know because the way technology is at the moment, who knows, you might we not might not be able to record on Friday. Uh this is the vampire movie about uh uh 
is it Dracula on the ship going? He's going from one place to another, right? Yeah. So basically, it is based off of one chapter in Bram Stoker's Dracula. I believe it's called the Captain's Log, <laughs> and it's all about how his coffin is. I think it's bringing him from Transylvania to London. I haven't. I haven't brushed up on my Dracula lore in a long time, so don't stake me. Okay. But. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, this what it's funny, you know. It's yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's oh, humor. It Norm, makes Norm you Donald go, ha ha ha. Fun Dracula. Norm Macdonald would have made a fun Dracula. Can you imagine if he would have been a Dracula? You remember the uh, uh, Leslie Nielsen uh, yeah. Dracula movie? What if Norm Macdonald was in that with him? Oh, that would have been great. That would be an odd team up that could be a lot of fun. Leslie Nielsen and Norm Macdonald. That really would be because that's just two different variations of of humor going head to head there. But yeah. So anyway, last voyage of the 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 Demeter is Dracula moving from Transylvania to London, from my understanding, and the film is just focused on that crossing because in the book it's basically just a short passage where it's like, yeah. Uh, we're transporting this cargo, and the ship arrives with no survivors. Yeah, an old t- tale that we've heard before. Yeah, yeah. Like you're, uh, some people are comparing it to Alien. Yeah, I could see or it's that. It's kind of like that whole enclosed, claustrophobic thing hunting you down throughout, sort of a experience. What are you hearing about oh, it yeah, so yeah. far? Because it, it seems like a very, very cool concept for a, a Dracula movie. Although Dracula having to use the, the the passenger bus to go from one place to another when he's a super-powered being, it's kind of funny to me. <laughs> well, the whole the, it, it, I think the whole thing is it's vampire lore where it's like, look, you can't cross water without, I think, like a certain amount of soil. Like, like there's something where vampires can't cross water. He's immortal. Like Go around it. Is, yeah, but Transylvania to London is probably a bitch, especially back then, because it's all horse-drawn carts and stuff. You don't have the horseless carriage at that point. Like, he, Dracula's trying to make sure that he gets over there, you know, with a decent amount of time. You know, love can't wait. He's met Jonathan Harker. He knows Mina's out there, and that's like the reincarnation of his true love. Like, he's, you don't want to wait for a date. So is he going? I'm looking. I'm legitimately pulled up a map here. Is it just crossing the English Channel? I think so. That is the issue because everything else looks to be across land. Yeah, it's probably just quicker that way. <laughs> or, you know what? Dracula's always been dramatic. Maybe it's just more exciting. I okay. All of a sudden, he I have to get his sea legs. This this is one of those movies that at first in the first trailer, so I'm like, this is awesome. Now I'm starting to think about it. I'm like. <laughs> This seems dumb. <laughs> Mike, you there? Oh, for f- sakes. All right, we're going to put a tally mark in there because we had our first uh, phone line issue of the day. I told you there were... Uh, <laughs> we've got one tally mark, and what's funny about it, I made a joke, and it was just dead air. And I'm like, okay, it was either really not funny or we have an issue. <laughs> Turns out we had an issue. Okay, so anyways, uh, Flight of the Dementor. What the hell is it called again? I'm sorry. The Last Voyage of the Demeter. <laughs> Clearly, folks, this is going to be the number one movie of the weekend in Iowa. I No, I'm sorry. It's It's been a week around here, and I, <laughs> I'm dealing with things here in the building, and I'm trying not to, uh, <laughs> trying not to lose my at the moment. So I'm doing the best I can, Mike. Do the best yeah, I can. I, I get you. Let's, I get you, man. Let's talk about let's talk about your vampire U Haul movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, oh, oh, you know what? I don't know why that randomly made, made me think of this. A picture of this, nineteen eighties. Yep. Vampire U Haul movie. Okay. John Candy's the vampire. <laughs> You know, you usually see a large vampire, except in Blade, the thing that was living in the basement there. And he'd be like the nice guy vampire. Like, obviously, he'd have to feed, but this would have been like the proto what we do in the shadows. No, 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 no. How about this? Canadian vampires. They're the nicest (laughs) vampires on the planet. Oh, that well, that just feeds into it. That just feeds John Candy was Canadian. That works. Like, he gets to a point, like, he really strikes. Oh, Vampire movie where the guy doesn't like, like he knows he has to do it and he goes as long as he can before he has to murder people. Well, kind of like Interview with the Vampire. A little bit, but more funny. Yeah, 
but funny. Yeah. Oh, like I, I, I could just like John King, like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, it's just a mess. You know, I, I, I never really wanted to do this. It just kind of, I kind of stumbled into it, and now the, this is what we've got here. I'm so sorry. You know, but I brought I your, like... I brought your family a hot dish, eh? <laughs> and then you get, you have Eugene Levy as his like, fam- or Martin Short as his familiar. Oh, I got another idea for this. He has to be going on a, like he's met somebody online and they're going on first dates. And he's trying to hide the vampire stuff from uh, from her. But then they find out like she's a werewolf at the end. I love this. I love this so much. <laughs> Fly to I, the Dementor, I, everybody. It should be a hit. I think we need to do this. I legitimately think we come up with a new movie idea every week. Nice. That could be, that legitimately could be a working movie. Hello? Hello. You there? Did we cut out or was yes. that a is that yes, another tally yes, mark? No, no. A friend of mine is just uh saying that he got Oppenheimer tickets. Cool. It's been out. Yeah, but IMAX seventy millimeter. Oh, wow. That's the big one, right? Yeah. That's your melt the face one, right? Yeah. Is he a good enough friend to take you? Uh well, we were planning to go, but I don't know if that's gonna happen because of scheduling and such, so but that's that's a talk for another day. <laughs> The play-by-play. This is such a weird episode this week. All right. If uh, as long as technology works, Friday morning uh, we'll add in uh, an addendum at the end of this episode uh, uh, for the vampire movie, U-Haul movie. You think you think Dracula yeah. uses FedEx or U-Haul? FedEx. FedEx. He's he castaway type guy. I was just about to say Dracula is like a big castaway fan. It's like you know, I may drain people of their life essence, but when Wilson floats away. It is still one of the most heartbreaking things I have ever seen on the godless earth. You sound like my cat. <laughs> I sound like your cat? So our cats... Is that when, the voice you give them? When, when we give our cats voices, they have sort of a... It, it originally started as German-Spanish. Yeah. It was, <laughs> but uh, you kind of sounded like uh, the voice what it's kind of evolved into. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Mike Ranch from CinemaBlend.com on the line with me right now. Uh, what else is going on movie-wise this week? Anything? I really have no idea. Oh, no. You know, movies just kind of shut down. Like, you know, I, I literally walked up. To, I, I turned on my computer, and then there's a sign that's just like, sorry, movies are closed. All right, cool. Less for me to edit this week. Mike, we'll see you next week. <laughs> you Smart ass. <laughs> um, you know what? I did just do a uh, just a random Google search. I just put in movie news. It seems like everybody's pissed at Barbie. Why so? It was like, oh, oh, you mean the various, yeah, the various whinings and cryings and <laughs> yeah, I I saw that. I mean, that was just, uh, it was that. I saw something about Adam Devine said Marvel movies ruin comedies. Um, but then he clarified what he said on that, where he was like, look. I don't mind these movies. It's just it feels like studios aren't yeah. pushing them out there. I don't mind if people go to the movie. Like, he, he kind of backpedaled. Well, not backpedaled, but he clarified a little yeah. bit after that. Uh, yeah. But uh, my- Natalie Portman and her husband are separating after 11 years of marriage. Sorry, Steph. He apparently cheated I've on I've got her. a dream, and her name is Natalie Portman, and I just got to give you back this ring. <laughs> Wow! After the kids and everything else, that's cold blooded. Ah, uh, you know what? Listen, my my wife would drop me for like Ben Roethlisberger and a couple other guys out there, so she gets it. It's fair. Ah, uh, this is this is a dream I have to go after, Mike Reyes. Well, you go grab that, sir. <laughs> I don't know if Got Natalie you. Portman wants me to grab her. I was gonna ask her out first, so. Hey. <laughs> That's about all I, all I can go with that. The yeah. only real pivot at this point without tripping over my feet and saying, I didn't mean to say grab her. What I meant to say was grab the opportunity. God damn it. Stop putting words in my mouth. I like to think in a world uh, or in a universe of multiverse that there are an infinite number of universes where I am dating and or married to Natalie Portman or Scarlett Johansson. Well, yeah, everybody sort of like jumps into those sort of hypotheticals when like i don't yeah but i don't just jump into it i jump in like fully commit i like i like go by like i'm at work and scarlet or natalie are calling me and i'm like listen i am trying to like they're on the set of some movie 
you know, when they're not striking. Avengers Endgame, Scarlet's column, or no, she wasn't in that. Well, she kind of was. Yeah, she was. She died in the middle of it. Anyways, sorry, I'm getting all my facts messed up. But anyways, that she's calling me in between takes, and I'm like, Scarlet, I am trying to work. I am trying to get some stuff done. Okay, I'll talk to you later. You know, that sort of thing. I'm familiar with delusions. Yeah, it's it's not just the uh, hot naked time or anything like that dream. It's like full-fledged, like, well, what do you want to do tonight? Do you want to go get food? Do you want to make food? What do you want to do? Do you want to watch this movie? I mean, you're technically in it. Do you really want to watch it? I will wear the f***ing tuxedo, okay, Scarlet? God. It's just itchy under the collar, okay? I've never been comfortable with this. Honestly. I said I'm, 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 I didn't like, lion. I didn't want to wear a pinstripe. But here we go, wear a pinstripe just for you scarlet okay fine look being a happy little chappy here for you oh great we need to go hang out with robert wow this really this 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 started as like typical fantasy and then it turned into a relationship i know that's the world i live in with in my head with these people (laughs) which isn't terrible to be honest i mean it's it's not like your standard like oh they're always gonna think i'm awesome and things are neat and this and that it's like no this is an actual relationship and it sounds like fun to me yeah oh boy that's just wonderful (laughs) mike reyes from cinemablend.com on the line with me we're kind of talking about movies this week (laughs) it legit well yeah because this could be one of the craziest shows we've ever done yeah it's dude it's it's august August is an interesting time for movies because of the fact that you don't know what's going to happen. Again, like I mentioned before, uh, Oppenheimer is still steamrolling IMAX theaters, so things are kind of getting shifted. Uh, they just, uh, speaking of news, they just ad- advanced the uh, or extended the engagement in IMAX another week, so it looks like Blue Beetle might have its IMAX showing. And a cutout. Uh, there we go again there's technical glitch number two everybody number two ladies and gentlemen how ma- what's the over under on how many you think we'll get to before we're done i don't know because i'm like i'm fed up at the moment <laughs> yeah uh so yeah blue beetle whatever do you want to see like are you well, excited at all for that it looks interesting but honestly i'm more preoccupied with getting tickets for Oppenheimer in 70 millimeter. Okay. That's because fair. I want to see this damn movie the way it's meant to be seen. And yeah. All right. Um, you know what? I can, I can go with you on that. Mike Reyes from cinemablend.com. We're just going to bag it. I mean, at, at this point, there is another movie we can talk about though. Eh, okay. What? Uh, Gran Turismo. Oh, is that, uh, is that out this week or whatever? So over the weekend, you're going to be able to go see, uh, from what I'm uh, remembering here, you're going to get to see Gran Turismo. I'm just double checking this because I had, I remember reading about it. And now I'm not, I know tonight is an early fan event. And now I'm like a little trigger to, shy on this. Well, just because it's such a developing situation Okay. where it was supposed to be out this weekend and then they pushed it. Another movie that lost its IMAX screens because of uh, Oppenheimer. So then what ended up happening is they said that they were going to do paid weekend previews where basically you can go this weekend. There's a handful. Yeah, starting this weekend and then running again next weekend. There's going to be a handful of shows where you can go see this at a local theater before it does the wide release on the 25th. And the big thing that the studio was saying is like, well, we may not have our actors promoting this movie right now, but we're hoping that the fans will do it. Like they're hoping that fans are, they're like, but you can, because people can now, they're hoping that there's going to be a good word of mouth from this movie. And it's pretty good. It's uh, actually based on a true story that surrounds the Gran Turismo game where a young racer, uh, Yan Mardenborough, uh, basically went from being one of the best Gran Turismo players to an actual race car driver. And the movie's about his quest to accomplish that. And it's pretty good. Like, it, it's really fun to see, like, there, there was Tetris earlier this year, and now there's this. That sort of takes a video game. It's like, okay, we're not going to create some sort of fake story in this world, but we're telling an actual 
story that's connected to this game. Okay. It looks interesting. It it seems kind of here's the formula for a movie like that. Underdog gets a chance and wins. Yeah. I don't think there's anything just from the trailer. And again, I have you've seen it, right? Yes. I I just yes, my I, feeling from seeing the trailer, there's nothing in in this movie that I haven't seen before. Is that fair? I guess. I mean, it's it's definitely a, a st- it's it's definitely a biopic. But the thing is, the story that it's telling and the way that it tells that story is a little more atypical than just your standard okay. like life story. Okay. All right. Cool. So you'd recommend it? Yes, I would definitely recommend it. Perfect. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com. All right, we are going to tempt fate, see if uh, we come back with uh, uh, some more about that vampire movie that I really can't remember the name of. Last Voyage of the Demeter. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to nail it right in your head. (laughs) Jesus, I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, We may be back, we may not. I don't know. Uh, So just, if not, have a great week, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, let's just end this on like a let's let's do the full dinosaurs ending, like uncertain dourness <laughs> and just yeah. Have fun with life, everyone. Survive us. Avenge us. All right, time travel is complete, kind of. We are essentially in a different universe right now using a different studio, so if it sounds a little bit different, that's what's happening. But like I said earlier, it's been a week. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com is on with me right now. And uh, Mike, you saw that vampire U-Haul movie, right? I want you to remember the title. Flight to the Dementor. (laughs) The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm like mixing Flight of the Intruder, which, by the way, have you ever seen Flight of the Intruder? No, but I want to. It's a uh, uh, it's a military movie. Nom. Yeah. Yeah, Nom Flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I God, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that movie in ages. So, anyways, uh, last voyage of the thing. What do we think? Demeter. Demeter. I really <laughs> like this movie. <laughs> It was good, huh? I was I was so surprised. It's just I, I mean, so first of all, this is a chapter from Dracula. It's a chapter that you either sort of brush over or you don't talk about at all because it's just Dracula being brought from Transylvania to London. Like yeah, you said, Vampire he's, he's moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's moving. He's got his like he's got his stuff. He really wants to start it new in, you know, a big city. And this is this is pretty much two hours of constantly rampant, slow burn tension. But a friend of mine and I were talking about it, and it's kind of like, this is another version of Alien. This is a haunted house on a ship, and everything is slowly going wrong and getting deadly. <laughs> and it's just... Oh man! I if, if you miss Master and Commander, and if you miss Dracula, this movie is that. Perfect, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com talking about the last voyage of the Demeter. Dement Demeter, right? I got it yep. right there. I got it right, right? Yes, I am. I am, the, I am the best ever. <laughs> uh, as we uh, kind of wrap up this week, uh, can I give you a couple uh, TV notes real quick? I was hoping you would say something about Strange New World. Uh, that's a really good season season finale, and it ended like it's a to be continued leading into next season. Oh. I did I did not see it coming. It, oh, it was one of those it, world scenario. Yeah, it was one of those things where you're really into the story, and then all of a sudden, like the end comes up and it goes to be continued. You go wait, wh- wait, what? What? That was me last you said night. This was the finale. <laughs> that was that was it. But it was really good. And I'll tell you this much: it's it's one of the. F- Star Trek doesn't always do like aliens well because it's always like just a human in, you know, makeup. Yeah. The Gorn are the aliens in the the antagonists in this and they do them really well. Like it almost seemed like a little bit like you brought up aliens for uh, 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 the vampire movie. It was a little bit like that on this end where it was scary. Yeah, at, the- it was scary at times. Yeah, I heard that they had reinvented the Gorn for 
Stranger Worlds, and I think I saw a, a screen cap of it. It did look pretty impressive. Yeah, it's pretty amazing what they did, and it's just, it, God, the special effects have come so far and have made those shows so cool to watch. You know, you go back to, you yeah. know, the, the you know, of course the original series, but even Next Generation and Deep Space Nine and that, where you could slowly see time and, you know, technology catching up to each other, and boy, they... They dropped the saucer section of a ship onto a planet as a weapon, and it was pretty fantastic. I'll just say that. What? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It was a death frisbee. We'll put it there. (laughs) Ow. Uh, Real quick, they did introduce a uh, new character, a beloved character last night. Oh. Who'd they introduce? Uh, Spoiler, if you haven't watched it yet, uh, you know, I'm going to say it. Uh, They introduced Montgomery Scott. Oh, that's awesome. I know, it was pretty cool. So anyways, if you get a chance, check out Strange New Worlds. Uh, The other couple uh, TV things I wanted to drop on you real quick. Uh, We watched the first uh, few episodes of Only Murderers in the Building. Uh, New season or from the beginning? New season. Season three. I've never watched that show, actually. Yeah, dude, it is so good. It is so well written and it is so funny. It's just... It looks it. And it's like old style funny if that makes sense yeah just like very clever and very astute sort of versus punchline punchline right yeah it's uh, and selena gomez can hang with steve martin and martin short she's so great i've seen in the previews she really is good at what she does but um new season uh paul rudd's in it meryl streep's in it this year uh paul rudd they've made a very not likable character and it's kind of interesting to see yeah, I like when someone's like kind of dares to do that. Uh, do you remember uh, Tropic Thunder? Yes. Uh, ben Stiller's character. Imagine him a little more douchey and <clears throat> switching over to theater, and that's kind of what Paul Rudd is in this. Oh man, now I just want a Tropic Thunder sequel where like Tug Steedman's doing theater. I know, right? Uh, it, it was a very funny interview. It was very good. But anyways, um, my other, uh, if you get a chance, watch uh, Only Murders in the Building. It's fantastic. And uh, my other one real quick, we uh, started watching the first couple episodes of Twisted Metal on Peacock. I hear that's really good, too. It is really funny. It, it, my wife, we got done with the first epi- episode, and she goes, that was not what I was expecting. What was she expecting? I don't know, and I don't know exactly what I was expecting. Anthony Mackie is fantastic in it. He's re- he's very, very funny and quick-witted. I don't doubt that. That dude is really fun. I mean, in um, in in the Marvel movies, I mean, he is, you know, Falcon and uh, has a certain demeanor to him and stuff. But in this, it's very, like, cool high school senior type guy. Yeah. Well, I believe this show is show run by the the writers of Deadpool. I know they're involved somehow. So that kind of that track. Okay. No, that that makes total sense. So very funny stuff. Um, if you get a chance, check out Twisted Metal as well. All right, since we are broadcasting from an alternate universe today, uh, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, Mike's had an echo in his phone the entire time. Still? I've actually been able to to manage it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, what was the movie this week again? Last Voyage of the Dem- Demeter. There we go. Did I get it? Yes, you did. Oh, I'm, that's awesome. That makes my day. All right, we'll leave it there. Mike Grace from CinemaBlend.com joins me every Friday on the show to talk about movies. Uh, Mike, thanks so much, and goodbye, 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 goodbye. Dracula. <laughs>